What's the motherfucking deal? <laughs> Welcome to Soft Sports. Uh, I'm your host, Ed Honcho. If you can't tell, this little name bar was there. I know you just seen it. It's on the hat. It's on the fucking shirt. Yes. No no issues with saying the shameless self-promotion. Um, but welcome to Soft Sports, man. If you're not familiar with Soft Sports, Soft Sports is a Houston, Texas homer network. Not Houston Texans, but Houston, Texas. We've just been talking a lot of Texans. I haven't been giving the Rockets their love. And we got to get Hector on here to talk about the Strolls and all that good stuff. But again, <clears throat> if you're new to this, man, like I said, we talk all sports, but only Houston today. We're going to be getting to a, a rational recap of last night's Monday night football game between the Tennessee Titans and the Houston Texans. Um, and there's just a few factors that I want to get into, so make sure you hit that like button, man. If you're new to this, like I say, subscribe. We we drop this every day and usually go live every evening at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, depending on if there's a game or not, and a couple other factors. But anyway, um, so man, like and subscribe, hit that, hit that button and all that good shit. But let's get into it, man. Let's get in it to win it. Um, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. There's like five things I want to discuss that I saw in this Texans team last night that I think will bode well for this team moving forward and we'll kind of talk about a little bit of other news also prior to me well before I started recording I just see that uh they released Josh Kaez and they have activated Dylan Cole which is a good sign because Cole World uh we already know what Dylan Cole is capable of and he's going to be a star linebacker in this league for many years to come if he can stay healthy Again, he's a warrior. In my book, the dude played through the game with the fucking broken wrist. So you have to respect that. But let's go on again to a few things, like I say, from last night's game. We're not going to get into a whole lot. It's going to be a nice, short, decent recorded video. Um, we're going to get into five things that I noticed last night that I think are going to be good signs for the future of this team. But, you know, that were also key factors in the Texans victory over the Tennessee Titans. So this is a rational recap. Hey, if you like the channel, if you love the channel, man, slide by staysaucy.com. Get you some of this fresh soft sports merch. Uh, the honcho gear is not uh, available on there yet, but we'll get that. We'll get that going. So I know a lot of people have requested about the, the honcho hat. And uh, just because I'm Ed Honcho, you can be your own honcho. So you can get you one of those. And make sure you show some love and go to the uh, Soft Sports social media, Soft Sports HTX on Instagram and Twitter. But man, hey, all that stuff is good. All that stuff is lovely. And again, hey, Sauce Nation, y'all know who y'all are. Make sure y'all drop that in the comment below. If you're watching the video, man, give, give me a what's the motherfucking deal in the comment section. You know, let me know that y'all came through. You know how that goes. You know, what's the motherfucking deal? Hashtag WTMFD. So, man, let's get into the conversation, man. So, uh, the thing that I noticed first and foremost, you know, kind of recapping, going back and look at the game, and it's something that we talked about in the pregame show, um, and that is getting DT implemented into this offense. You know, it's been a couple of weeks. You know, the first week really didn't count. He was going against his old team, but they found a way to kind of, you know, get him a couple of plays in. Even this game, it was only, what, 48 yards, but you're talking about two touchdowns, which were integral to the success of this game, shows that uh, Deshaun Watson is feeling comfortable looking for Demarius, that he's he's comfortable with him as an asset. Uh, I know he had him on a little screen, and then again, I know he ate um, one on – Adore, who I adore, you know, we adore Dory Jackson, and then um, <clears throat> I forgot, I can't remember if the other one was on Dory, it was on somebody else, I, I forgot who the other one was. But um, the fact that he is a part of this offense, the fact that you see that he is becoming comfortable in this offense, that Deshaun has become comfortable with him, it shows that he has been able to, you know, get the playbook down rather, relatively quickly, or that Bill O'Brien has been smart enough to find ways to make sure that he gets the ball in his hands because he is a contributor. I mean, you gave up. I don't even remember what they gave up at this point. I might have forgot already. But I think it was swapping fourth rounders or no, swapping like seventh and then gave up a fourth rounder or something like that for him. And again, it may have been worthwhile. We'll see what happens with that contract next year. We're not worried about that. We're worried about what he can do right now. And the fact that Demarius has gotten here it was not a bust of a trade that he's, you know, contributed a couple of touchdowns and become a, a respectable piece of this offense again to take some of that pressure off DeAndre you know, it's 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 going to be very interesting to see what they do with him going forward because apparently he shows some uh, versatile skills. So that's kind of one thing. The second thing that I noticed, um, I kind of want to talk about a a series of plays, and this series of plays to me, it may have been the defining moment of the Houston Texans season. Now, maybe over exaggerating, maybe I'm just saying something, maybe I'm not. But I feel like we've seen this team 
win eight straight, which is great. Eight straight is the best in Texans franchise history. Eight straight after going 0 3, never done before in the NFL. I wouldn't necessarily call it a record. I guess more that's more like a fun fact. You know what I mean? Because what, what kind of record is that really to have? Because you, you have to start off losing three to get it. But it is what it is. Um, but also, I mean, like I said, you know, you have put together a nice string of wins, and you you can talk about you know how Tennessee jumped out early. But I want to talk about that play uh, on the fourth and one. And ten, Tennessee was right there. I mean, on the break, I think they were about a yard or two out of the, out of the goal line, and um, they stuffed them. They stuffed them on the fourth and one. And okay, now that's a big play. That's a huge play for the defense. Huge play because you know traditionally this game, this team is uh, supposedly one of the easiest to score on in the red zone. So that's huge for the defense. But to turn around and bust that bitch open for ninety-seven yards on the next fucking play, that shows cohesiveness. I mean that the the the, the team is firing on all cylinders. So again, your defense comes up and makes a big play and gets you the turnover on downs or whatever you want to call it and then the offense turns around and I mean just gashes them which is unfortunate because it puts your defense like right back on the field but it is what it is um to me that that was a sign of a team that's starting to come together as a unit you know when Demarius first got here he talked about everybody being friends not being little pockets of buddies here but the offense and the defense and even those guys who are specialists on the special teams be coming together as a unit and all working together to achieve a common goal and to me it just seemed like that though that that little series of plays just seemed to it, it seemed different than what we've seen usually in the Texas. We've seen big strike plays. We've seen great defensive plays, but just the back-to-back and the nature in which it happened in the nature and like just that it, it was like it, it had to happen. You know, the the intensity of those two plays, it was just a very exciting thing to see. Um, number three. Third thing that I noticed, and speaking about, like I say, the defense on that, on that fourth one, but overall it seemed as though the game as it went on, as the game went on and on and on, that the game the defense got more and more intense. Like, I don't know if the ties were getting worn down. You know, I don't know what it was, but it seemed as though, you know, you had the first little the little bust early. You know, you had a couple little chunks that, uh, that uh, what's the Davis kid I think had on J. Joe a couple of them early. No big deal. You know, he was just keeping everything in front of him. You had the kind of the the little, the miscue by Honey Badger. Gave him, gave him a freebie. Who cares about that? No one, nobody, nobody worried about that. I mean, fuck-ups happen. Players fuck up. Um... But that defense, it seemed to get more and more aggressive, more and more intense as the game went along. And it just seemed like there was less and less that they could do. And everybody wants to talk about, oh, oh, oh Marcus is completion. Marcus, that whole completion record thing, it's a scam. It's a sham, man. Because I told you guys, uh, if you caught any of the videos prior to the, the pregame stream that I did about the game coming up, um, that Marcus was like 10 passes away from setting uh, a record in a Tennessee Titan uniform. And it, it disgusts me to say this, you know, because you're talking about when Warren Moon, uh, Steve McNair, and basically being the most efficient uh, quarterback with at least 1,500 attempts um, in a Titans uniform. It disgusts me to say the name Warren Moon to be in that category. But, you know, Tennessee took all those records when, when Houston, you know, when they left Houston. Fuck them. We kicked them out of Houston again last night. So I think that that was more the plan to try to get him that and try to get him confident to make him look better than he really is. A lot of that shit was dinking and dunking. He might have had, what, one or two plays that were actually tossed, you know, 15 yards. And a lot of that was just his receivers making great plays. Uh, He used that sideline a couple of times, uh, like I said, on J. Joe. It is what it is. But the defense, I mean, it just got more and more. Uh, aggressive as it went on. They were hitting. They were folding guys over. Uh, I know Henry can be a, a force to deal with. You know, you see B Max seemed like a couple times early on, like it was, you know, he was getting a little worn out. But then you saw, like I say, these guys just seemed to ramp up the intensity. I don't know if it was if it was the, the energy in the air or what it was, but that's what you want to see. You want to see that defense get more and more difficult to move on as the game progresses, you know. A lot of times we've seen them get more and more worn down, but uh, I believe yesterday was the opposite. Um, the fourth thing I want to talk about. Fourth thing I want to talk about. Deshaun Watson 
in my personal opinion, as I was watching the game, and you know, we talked about you know what was happening earlier this year. You know, there was the big stats number where he's the most hit quarterback, or you know, he's getting he's taking the most pressures, he's been sacked the most. You know, that offensive line, yada yada yada, this that and the third. Now they had a couple of miscues, and I mean, like nobody's perfect. I mean, it's going to happen. But the thing about that is, what I saw from Deshaun last night was a fully healthy guy. To me, again, he he looked as fresh on his legs as he's looked all year. Then let's not say he hasn't been scrambling here and there and you know look good. But again, oh, he had that 15 yard uh, touchdown. Then that one he broke for another what 30, 40 or so uh, yards. And uh, late in the game, it almost had the. I mean, it was no fumble. I don't care what any Titans fan says. There was no fumble. But um, he looked good. looked fresh, man. And that's the thing. Like I say, that's a good sign for it to be already, you know, at this point in the season, you're talking about, what, 11 games in, you got about five games left, to 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 look fresh like that. And, I mean, he, again, he was throwing accurately. His arm looked strong. Um, it was just, I think, the only, only two miscues I remember him really kind of having was the one he – kind of overthrew Hop, and I think that was just kind of on, on, on him and Hop having a little bit of a miscue, and I think Hop was trying to get to it, but he didn't want to get that P.I. on uh, Adoree, and then the other one was, I want to say, with Ryan Griffin, and he just kind of led him a little bit further out, you know, uh, Griffin not being that athletic, you know, maybe one of those younger guys would have, would have caught that, but I'm not going to put that on, on Griffin, you know, that's, that's your quarterback knowing who your target is, but outside of that, Deshaun Watson looked really good last night and uh, played an excellent game, you know, it wasn't uh the stat sheet stuffing, but he played the way he needed to play for this team to secure a confident victory. Um, and then, you know, the fifth thing kind of tying into that is, you know, the play calling, man. Ultimately, Bill O'Brien, uh, Cornell, both relatively good games calling plays. Uh, we've been harsh on them, been very hard on them earlier in the season. Uh, you know, especially talking about that beginning, you know, that Wildcat was, was killing us early on in the season. They held both in boys to uh, what? 38 yards on 15 rushing attempts. That's great. That That's great. I'm sure that I haven't looked to see what the uh, statistics are. Like I said, I really didn't pay too much attention to the box scores. So I'd have to go back and actually I probably should have done that before I started the video. But, um, you know, that, that shows that defense was swarming last night. Of course, Mariota had his. But you got to think about it. He had um, – had about 100 yards on fucking the two fucking touchdown plays. I think one of them was um, one of them was like a 48 yarder. The one where uh, Hal and JJ kind of ran in each other, and then uh, the other one was the 61 yarder. I think the the tight end Smith or whoever it was that was the miscue early on. Again, so these were plays where the Texans allowed them. It wasn't like they were just bashing us up and down. So I mean, you take those two plays away out of what 23 attempts. So you take about 100, so then you got a guy who's getting you about, um, what is that, that period, about 21 attempts and about 200 yards left. So, you know, he's getting you about fucking 10 yards an attempt or so, if that. But, again, a lot of it was the um, – a lot of it was his receivers making plays. It, it wasn't like Mariota was just really slanging it around. It was it was a lot of dinking and dunking. It it wasn't anything exceptional. And I don't know why they they keep trying to play like that's why I say I, I'm not a stat person because stats you can make up a stat to make it sound like anything you fucking want to. But we saw Bill O'Brien open up that playbook a little bit. We saw some interesting things uh, again, like we saw the implementation of Demarius Thomas. So we saw that he is you know. Uh, I don't want to say fully implemented into the offense. We saw that they were still able to score, find ways to make plays. And you got to give a shout out to Brian Gain for going out and picking up the the um, the DeAndre Carter kid because when Kuti went down with the hamstring injury, you had a legitimate slot receiver who came in and could make plays still. So uh, I'm not sure how adept he is with the playbook, but that's an asset moving forward. So I think the Texans have become overall a smarter team on all facets. I think the the coach has gotten better in the sense of, you know, he he went a while by kind of minimizing what he was allowing Deshaun to do. And a lot of people complain, oh, why are we running so much? Well, we run so much because what he's hoping is to see what we saw last night from Lamar Miller. And again, you can't plan for a run like that. But, you know, if you keep running eventually, you know, one of those can bust open because Lamar Miller's a guy that can do that. And that's what a lot of fans don't realize because y'all are so, y'all, the Texans fans, the, the problem is that y'all fall in love with the national media too much. And this is why I saw sports is here so we can talk to y'all. Um, and y'all listen to what the national media says because Lamar Miller doesn't get in love in the national media like none of the Texans do. You know, y'all think that he's not a good running back. The dude is the only running back to have ever had two 97-yard runs. The last person to do it was him. 
So that tells you, you know, he's a he has that breakout power. It's just about how he's used in this offense. We've been saying that for say, at least since last year since soft sports began, you know, and I think that's just something people have to realize that you have to respect the talent. It's just about how this talent is used. Um, and again, like I said, Cornell had guys in the right place. Uh, I'm still kind of. I'm still kind of upset about that BSPI call because that's another play. Like I say, you look at that that early on, that 10 points that they were gifted. One was that PI call that put them in position because they really couldn't move it too much after that. And then the second one was the um, the little lucky play, you know, like I said, a miscue with Honey Badger. The Titans really, they that that 17 was probably not really a, a true identifier of what the score should have been. But it is what it is. But I want to know what you guys thought, man. Again, like I say, this is a rational recap, just kind of looking back at the game. Uh, from last night and we'll be looking forward uh, to the Browns and things like this as we get later on this week probably drop some on that tomorrow and uh, I got another video coming up I may not drop it today we'll see um, it's getting close to stream time so we'll see what's up if uh, I'm not sure if we're going to stream tonight or not we'll see but um, with that being said it's your boy Ed Hacho man I appreciate y'all again if y'all are new to this man, join Saw Sports we do this every night every day is at least some kind of content uh, and again for those of you who don't know Follow on the social medias, South Sport HTX, on Instagram and Twitter. And again, man, hey, slide by the freshest, sauciest sports gear site on the internet. That is uh, staysaucy.com, man. Get you some of that fresh South Sports sauce, man. I appreciate y'all for coming through, man. I appreciate y'all checking out the vids. Again, hey, Sauce Nation, if you are the real deal, if you've been fucking with this sauce, man, let me get a what's the motherfucking deal in the comment section below if you didn't do it earlier. But I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Hey, but y'all be cool like y'all be cool. Again, I'll catch y'all later on. I'll chuck up a deuce. Y'all stay saucy.